Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel. First time you're passing through, you know the drill. Thumbs up, thumbs down, share, subscribe. And interact with my subscribers and comment and all those kind of things. Well, this is the daily roundup. I've got quite a few little bits that I'd like to share with you that I think might be quite informative and some of them quite amusing. So, um, yeah, we're going to start off with the Chinese doctors. There's two Chinese doctors. I don't know if you've heard about it, but apparently they caught the coronavirus, was really, really sick in hospital, ended up waking with, with dark skin. Now, to me, they looked very much like, you know, that German woman who took those um, melanin tablets. That's what it looked like. And I was wondering, I wonder if they were trying to... You know, there was this rumour going out at one point that melanin would stop people from getting the coronavirus. And I thought to myself, I wonder if that's what they tried on these two. I mean, why just these two? Why would just these two people turn black and their hair even turn um, afro, coily? So, I mean, when you look at the pictures, that's what you see. They're, even their hair texture is different. To me, they don't look like the same person. But there again, who am I? I? I really don't know. It's very difficult to tell if somebody's the same person when they've got tubes up their nose and you can't see them. Now, if they really wanted us to see that they were the same person, they would put them adjacent, wouldn't they? They'd have, OK, the guy before he, he was ill and before he had the, um, the, whatever you call it, the medication, and then they'd have the other guy beside him, not like a side profile with all these tubes out of their noses. So you can't really tell whether or not it's him or not. You know, I, I, I don't know. Could be him, could not be him. Who knows? Sometimes, because with news these days, and, you know, like I have to keep quoting Trump for some reason. He's always talking about fake news. And sometimes you do not know the story behind the, the news by the time we get it. All we've got is what people tell us. We don't know what kind of medication they were he was taking or whatever. One of them is still uh, in intensive care. The other one, I don't know, he seems to be improving. But my point is, who's to know if those are the same people? that they're showing on the front and saying they turn black. And I don't understand the logic behind that anyway, because I'm sure they're not just using a medication just for this, these two people that they haven't used for anybody else. They're saying these people are having nightmares and traumas because their skin has gone dark. So what can I say, honestly? What next? What next? Anyway, um, is there anything that I really need? Okay, I'll just give you their names. Dr. Yi Fan and Dr. Hu Weifeng. They were allegedly infected with COVID-19. Well, they were infected with COVID-19 um, while treating patients at Wuhan Central Hospital. After they survived the illness, it is alleged they changed colour and they're, 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 they're acute, well, what they're saying is that it's because they had liver failure. Their liver failure affected their hormones. And so in changing their hormones, they change colour. Does that make sense to you? What's hormones got to do with changing your colour? And to so dark. Apparently... Um, the change in their skin colour was put down to hormone imbalance that took place as doctors' livers were damaged by the virus. So their skin colour is supposed to return to normal when their livers start functioning properly. And like I've said, they've had a traumatic experience turning black, knowing what it's like to be on the other side. I don't know. I mean... I'm reporting on it because, you know, um, I'd like to get your views on it. Do you think it's credible? Do you think it's credible that um, 
these two Chinese doctors can turn black because their livers are damaged? Is that one of the side effects of damaged liver? Or do you think it's something else? Okay, the second um, piece of news. We know that people are hard up, don't we? Well, um, UK test patients are being offered £625 to take part in a coronavirus vaccine trial. I think this was going on uh, a couple of months ago, I heard something. I, don't, I can't remember what the amount was. This, seem, this one seems a bit different. But those who take part in the coronavirus trials could be paid between 190 to 625. I'd like to know what that disparity is. Why would somebody be paid 190 and another person pay 625? But it could be because there's two sets of trials. So maybe if you have one trial, it's 190 you get. And if you have the other trial, that's 625. And this is to reimburse their time. The Imperial College of London and University Hospital Southampton are looking for guinea, well, they don't say they're looking for guinea pigs, they're looking for test patients, but um, the term guinea pig came from the 1700s when they were testing guinea pigs. Now they use rats and they use mice and stuff like that, but that kind of term guinea pig still stands. So, um, so they're looking for volunteers to test whether potential inoculation is effective in tackling the deadly virus. The source of this information is the Metro. Um, this will be the first human experiment to see if it works. Um, what else? The COVID-19 vaccine is being trialed on, hum on humans from tomorrow. Imperial College said tests for its separate vaccine will take place in the weeks ahead. And anyone who is healthy and aged between 18 and 55 can take part at the Imperial College London or the University College in Southampton or Bristol Children's Vaccine Centre. Um, if there are a few stipulations, like if you've had coronavirus before, you can't, um, you can't volunteer. If you're pregnant, you can't volunteer. Um, and if you've had been, if you've had a vaccine before, um, whether it's a coronavirus or any other vaccine, you can't volunteer. So the Oxford trial is currently recruiting volunteers in Greater London, Bristol, BS1 to BS6 and BS8, not BS7. I'm not quite sure why they're not recruiting from BS7. I wondered, it, I wondered if it had to do with how affluent um, the people were in BS7, but it doesn't have anything to do with that. And um, BS1, the property prices were way over, you know, some of them were over a million just for a flat. And BS7, um, the property prices range from between 350000 to about 750000 Still quite expensive. I didn't realise it was so expensive to live in Bristol. Um, the Oxford vaccine is known as the CHAD OX1N COV-19 and will be trialled on 510 people out of a group of 1,112. I often wonder, why don't they round these figures off? Why, don't they, why do they have 510 as opposed to 500? And why do they have 1,112 as opposed to 1,000? I never quite understand why they have these odd numbers. I'm sure they'd be easier to work out. There has to be a reason behind it. And, of course, they're aged between 18 and 55. 18 and 55. Half the volunteers will get the new vaccine. That's why I was wondering if they're the ones that would get the £165 or whatever it was. was it? No, £190. And then the others will get the control vaccine, which I was wondering if that is the one they got £625 for. Control vaccines are commonly used to evaluate effectiveness of licensed vaccines 
after deployment in public health programs and can provide data on real world conditions. So I expect that those who opt for the 625 vaccine, there's a slighter higher risk than those who opt for the um, £190, um, the other vaccine. So if you have taken part in an adenoviral, adenoviral vaccine or have received any other coronavirus vaccines, you cannot volunteer, nor if you're pregnant. Um, you'll, you'll also, you also can't take part if you've tested positive for coronavirus. The Imperial team hopes that the RNA vaccine will begin human trials in June. So I guess there's one that they're starting from tomorrow, the other one they're starting from in June. The group has not yet begun screening participants for the study, but members of the public can register their interest by signing up to the NIHR Imperial CR for Romeo F for Freddy Healthy Volunteers Database. So I guess you'll put that in the search engine and it will come up. So what else do we have? We have these drones. You know, the other day I was talking about how are the police, you know, we have the emergency laws saying that the police can go into these houses if they suspect somebody is sick. And I'm saying, how the hell are they going to know somebody is sick from the outside? Well, what do you know? They've got drones. Drones can, capt drones can capture people from nearly 200 feet away to see if they have a temperature. The other, oh, well, I've said that bit, but uh, this is from the Metro again. A company in the US has adapted a drone so it can be used by police to measure people's temperature from nearly 200 feet away, as well as monitor their heart or breathing rates. Now, what is going on? So desperate are they to find out the people who've got coronavirus. Why? I can understand they don't want it to be people to catch it. But like I said the other day, it's almost like having the coronavirus is a criminal offence. Most bizarre. Anyway, the drones have been fitted with sensors that can also see when someone coughs or sneezes. So what about the other day when I was coughing because I had some jerk sauce on my chicken? I had the jerk sauce and you know, like sometimes you eat it a bit too quick and it starts, you start choking and coughing and goodness knows what. And I was coughing for quite a, a couple of minutes before I got some water. Now that drone hears me doing that, you'd be down on me like, goodness knows what, like white on rice. And sneezing. I mean, in this time when you've got um, asthmatic people and you've got what that seasonal, what is it? Asthmatic, seasonal, what do they call that um, thing where people keep sneezing all the time this time of year? Oh, it's gone out of my head. Anyway, so everybody that sneezes, is this drone going to pick them up? Absolutely ridiculous. Ah, oh, dear, oh dear. And they, they reckon it's in a bid to flatten the curve. The dragonfly, that's D-R-A-G-A-N -A -A fly, the company behind the drone, says it doesn't have facial recognition. I wouldn't really need it. If it can identify you because of your temperature and your cough and goodness knows what else it doesn't need your face does it i wouldn't be surprised if like those dogs it just lands on you or something you know i mean does it does it just take a photograph of you as you're coughing or sneezing and then send it off to the police station with your location supposing you've moved off from that location from the time the drone has sent that off what then? Is that is that police officer or whatever going to be knocking on all the doors in the vicinity looking for that person? I mean, that drone has to capture more information than somebody coughing. Otherwise, how is the police going to track that person down? 
has to be more than just it has to be more than just um, telling them that you've got you was coughing or sneezing because if you know if there's lots of people in a park oh I, I don't know some of these things are beyond me really really beyond me what else is there? The army wants to take over the NHS in the UK because they reckon they're not handling the PPE equipment properly. They're not giving it out to the people that need it. I mean, any excuse. Why do you need the army to dish out PPE equipment? Anyway, that's what else is in the news. Um, and finally, I think... No, not finally, maybe... Um, pre-finally, um, who's more valuable, the patient or the carer? I'm sure no um, nurse or doctor or health professional went into join the NHS as a nurse to put their lives on the line. I mean, yes, you go in there to save lives. That is why you become a nurse or a doctor. But you don't really expect to lose your life trying to save somebody else's life. And that's what's happening in The Guardian. They said, you know, at least 100 um, health professionals, doctors, nurses, porters, social care workers have died from coronavirus. Um, I was listening to Breakfast TV. She mentioned 61, but she said she didn't have the latest figures. So it's really quite sad. I mean... I can understand with the PPE equipment, they're saying it's not enough. But you know, would you, it, to me, that's negligence. How can you put staff in an environment where they're not protected? And then you claim us all outside of the hospital who are, you know, just as much, who are less at risk. You're telling us to wear masks and stay inside and self-isolate. And yet people on the front line are being forced in close proximity to people who have coronaviruses, which is which I hear is really contagious. And I think it, it has to be more than a cough or a splutter. Because I'm wondering if those patients that are in the hospital, whether they wear masks, if they wear masks, why would um, the carers be catching it? I mean, surely, because surely it would make sense that those who come in and have coronavirus, they should be protected and the carers should be protected. So how is it transmitted? So I don't have the answers. Uh, you might have the answers. I, I don't have the answers. Uh, what else? So there's the nursing website said it includes nurses, doctors, um, porters, and members of social care professionals. Our prayers go out to the families and loved ones who, of those who, sacrificial lambs who have put themselves on the line for the patient. Um, OK, and then we've got the government of Nairobi in Kenya. He believes that giving people, you know, a small bottle of um, Hennessy will help cure the coronavirus because it's got um, alcohol in it. Notwithstanding, it's only got about 40 percent alcohol and you need about, I don't know, over 70 percent. Mind you, I was wondering whether white rum in that case, because white rum is overproof. I mean, if there was a point, because we use hand sanitizer, that needs to be over 70% to kill the virus. How do we know if we didn't have a glass of white rum that that wouldn't kill it? Anyway, I'm not encouraging alcoholism. I'm not even saying that that um, is a remedy. But the governor of Nairobi, Mike Sanquo, um, he was giving out small bottles of Hennessy in the coronavirus kit, claiming its alcohol content will kill the virus. And, um, and he calls the liquor stroke sanitizer. So, oh, dear. What else? What else have we got? And last but not least, we've got Andrew Cuomo has signed an executive order allowing couples to get married online. 
couples in New York via video conference. They can get their marriage license online and they can get married. To be honest, if you've been on lockdown 24-7 for like nearly three months and you still want to marry each other, I say go for it. Because that would be the biggest test, being with somebody 24-7 for three months and you haven't wanted to strangle them. I think that's a good, um, I think that's good for a successful marriage. I don't know what you think. Would you want to get married um, online? I mean, I'll tell you one thing, it'd be bloody cheaper, wouldn't it? You just video conference and it's about how it should be, just you and the other person. No pomps and circumstance, no thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds. Just you, the um, registrar, he's got all your documents that you've been sending to him. And um, you say your piece and that's it. You get married online. What is happening here? Anyway, that's all I've got to say, pips. Bye-bye.